out who we like. Thank you for joining us on the Rick Shields Golf Show podcast. Yeah, excited to be here. First time doing a proper podcast, so I'm excited. Uh, the backdrop okay for you? Uh, <laughs> I'll ask for more. No, it's pretty sick. And you've been in now St. Andrews for about a week practicing, because yeah. we're going to do a pretty awesome video tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You excited about that? Yeah, I am. Um, got some hickory clubs apparently, so I've hit I've hit them about once or twice, and once good, once bad. But I'll <laughs> hopefully get get used to it. But I know it's it's going to be pretty sick. Uh, the layout that we're going to play is going to be pretty exciting. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I almost want to go back, back. Okay, mm-hmm. when did you first start playing golf? When did um, it all start? It's kind of like every pro. I mean, I picked up a club when I was about two or three plastic ones uh and then when i was eight i started playing these little tournaments back in perth home at home in australia um mum was a golf professional so that's pretty much how we got oh, wow. started wow, started to it so teacher or yeah teacher player? yeah teacher oh she she did play and then she just started teaching um and then i would you know i'll go follow and then that's quite copy cool her, so yeah it was pretty cool yeah so she was she had a history of trying to play on tour yeah I don't know the full story, but I um, <laughs> don't know my mind. My mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, She'd be she, listening yeah. going, bloody hell, I mean, I've taught know. you better than this. <laughs> uh, just don't listen. Uh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, she was, I think she was on the Korean tour for a little bit, and then uh, mm. she just started studying back in, in, oh, not back, but like in Australia. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, she just started teaching in Australia. And um, She still teach now? I, no, not anymore. Um Mum and dad have a cafe back home, so they're they they're really? busy doing that. Mum does the cooking and dad does the coffee, so no way. Um, it's pretty busy in there. I've helped out a little bit and I'll stick to golf. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty nerve wracking when there's like so many people coming at coming oh at you goodness. and asking for coffees and I was like And that's in it. Perth. Yeah, that's in Perth, Australia, yeah. So is that like a seaside resort is that a seaside cafe or is that No, just inside just inside a supermarket. I mean, um, people People just get their order, get their shopping, pick it up. A lot of a lot of locals come back every time. Like every, I worked there for like a week, and the same person, really, the same people just come back and back. And no, are they cool. are they super proud with pictures of you and you and your oh, sister? Oh yeah, you should. Oh, they, they they, were, Dad was gonna get cafe? this whole painting. Like it was probably like half the squint, <laughs> and is just it's gonna paint my sister and I on the wall. And we're just like, no, that's that's too embarrassing. But there are you know a few newspaper articles of the latest things that we've done and um it's pretty cool yeah they're pretty uh my Vic Open trophy was there for a little bit but I thought something might happen to it so I had it there for a little bit but um uh, really back home, yeah that's that's so good we'll yeah. come on to that because you have had a professional tour win already yes yes was it the Perth Open no, no it, it was a Vic Open it was, was a Victorian it. Open um at 13th Beach it was pretty cool it was uh actually pretty windy like yesterday it was like 40 50 k's and it was pretty cool um to get my first win in Australia and before you know COVID hit so I was excited to, you know, it was exciting to play in front of crowds and especially Vic Open, there's uh, no ropes. Yeah. So like all the, the crowd can actually like walk right behind you and literally Whoa. like they can be a few meters away from you. So it's pretty cool. How big, sorry, how, how big is that then to get your first win on tour? It sounds an obvious question, but that must change your mindset. I mean, to get on the European tour in the first place, so you obviously know you, you, you're a good, good level of golfer, but to actually get that win over the line at such a young age, that must fill you with confidence. Yeah, it's... um. It's amazing, especially doing it in Australia, but winning, I don't know, it's pretty tough. Like uh, my caddy at the time, you know, we we talked and I didn't have any three putts. I didn't miss any putts inside like four feet. Um, and especially those greens, they were, you know, it was so windy and to not have a three putt. And, you know, you usually have, you know, one or two maybe. And if I had those one or two, I would have been in a playoff. So, you know, I hit it. I thought I hit it amazing. I thought, you know, I didn't, I didn't make any, I don't think I made a double. Um, and yeah, pretty much to get that first win, it was pretty special. You know, you got to play really good that week. You know, winning doesn't come often. So mm. you got to play, you know, pretty much perfect um, throughout the whole week. And, you know, it was really, really cool to do that. And, you know, you, yeah, you get that satisfaction of, you know, you can play against, you know, a lot of the pros out there and um, hopefully you can do it consistently but yeah it's pretty tough to win out there um but yeah it's nice to get a bit of security as well for yeah. the year and next year and a half so it was it's cool it's awesome and then your sister Minji Lee had a victory as well was it last year 
Is it in Dubai? Yeah, in Dubai, in Dubai. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. She wins every year, so I don't know <laughs> what tournament. But um, How many wins has she got under her belt? Uh, I want to say like seven or eight maybe um wow. she went she won every year on the lpga i think for the first maybe six years That's and then so she had a she didn't win i think last year or two years ago but um how many years older is she she's two years older so she's 24 she's turning 25 this at the end of this month so uh yeah she's a couple years older than me yeah wow yeah. is it competitive growing up uh yes and no you know she i was always competitive and she was like do her own thing and i would go and practice with her but she would go piss off you're so annoying so <laughs> you know literally it, that happens every time you know still to this day i mean a, a bit better today but you know i'll get annoying on that side and you know, annoying typical brother. brother typical brother is it just the two of you yeah just the two of us yeah that's crazy yeah. and really uh, have you had matches do you have do you have matches yeah, when so you go back home now it's at the moment like on the record it's she won the first one and then i won the second one so we need a rematch but i mean we haven't we don't really see each other and when we do see each other it's only for a week or so so it's we try to get away from golf yeah. as much as we can of and course. You know, hang time. out yeah hang out and um, go to the cafe yeah exactly exactly help out yeah we don't really <laughs> see each other much in perth actually we see each other more you know when i'm in america i'll go see her or she would come see me um yeah, she came out to Kranz a couple years ago when we played in Swiss. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, we got to hang out and pop my collar up. Sorry. Um, but That's smart. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool, you know. Just so when you play her in a match, yeah. do you play? Same tees. Same tees. So the first time we didn't play the same tees and then my coach was like, play on the same tees because, you know, my sister – it's pretty close when she plays with the ladies and I play off the men's because obviously I hit it further than her. Yeah. Um, but then when we play on the same teams, I just thrash because, because of I'm length. so much longer than her and she gets annoyed at me. And Does she? You hit it so far. So, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Is there any part of her game yep. that's better than yours? Oh, I'd probably say everything. <laughs> no, she's she's very she's very good ball striker. Um, she's a machine. Like we just call her the machine. She just hits it dead straight every time hits every fairway you know yeah the ladies golf it's very it's not it's a good it's a great boring golf you know this 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 yes um and my sister when she when she putts really good she wins tournaments usually because her ball striking is always up to par but um above par but uh i mean we would go pretty close in most things uh i probably beat her in putting yeah um but yeah it's pretty I mean, yeah, I would say it's pretty close. That's, that's, did, did it feel like it almost, with the family, obviously, your mum being a golf professional and a coach now, your sister being so into it, yeah. did it cause it's kind of spur you on? Did it Did it almost, was your was your pathway almost set out to some degree? Um, that you, you a little bit. So it's funny. So I started loving golf and then, like, my sister practised a lot every day after go after school um and i would go follow her but i would you know kind of be in a shadow so i didn't really i didn't really enjoy it when i got to like 12 13 so i stopped for a year wow. um i did swimming pretty passionately i you know went before school after school and was in a squad uh and my sister was also a really good swimmer she could have either chose swimming or golf because wow, she wow. was so good in real those sporty two. Yeah, family exactly, Christ. Yeah. and um and then yeah i did basketball soccer taekwondo i did a lot of sports and i like you know a fast action sport and then yeah. i i got picked to play a tournament uh in sydney uh just a junior tournament and you know first time flying uh by myself and oh well with a team uh and you know that was so so amazing i really liked you know meeting new people from america canada yeah. everywhere europe they all came over so that got me started um started again so i came back and thought you know give golf another go and then i stopped probably sports when i was 15 uh except golf and kind of pursued that yeah so what was your lowest handicap as an amateur what did you get down to plus five i think yeah wow mm. it was that's pretty good yeah it's not too <laughs> bad yeah i mean does my sister is that like the benchmark almost do you mm. think do you think plus five because we've had a couple of pros now on yeah and we've had a, a, a young lad who kind of tried to play on tour european mm. tour james robinson and he um really good i think he, i can't remember what i think he was, was four or five james he yeah. had played the open had yeah. a year on a european tour yeah. didn't he but i think the the 
general consensus is like plus five is where you need to yeah, be. Yeah, I mean, really. if you, if I shoot five under for the rest of my life, I'm going to be Course close to number one in the if world. If you're you know? 20 under every tournament, exactly. you you're win gonna, most yeah, tournaments. exactly. So it's, I don't think it's an accurate representation. Obviously, the higher, the better. But it's not tall, like, your yeah, handicap's not on a tall golf course, it's is not, it, I suppose? What I've learned, it's not about how low you can go, it's how you can cope on the golf course. You know, professional life is completely different to amateur life. And yeah. Not many amateurs know that, you know, I'm here by myself for I know, a I was week. Say, you know, yeah. Like you're, that you, is mad. Yeah, you have to be able to learn to... Look after yourself. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, kind of be independent in that yeah. moment, mindset, you know? isn't it? Completely. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of, it's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not, I won't say it's the best life, but, you know, it's, you got to work hard to, you know, we want to be, you know, the Roy McElroy's or them, you know, we yeah. want to take care of a family, you know, live in mansions, do course, all that. Of so course. we got to, yeah, but people always look at the PJ tour and like, oh, I want to be like him, but you got to get through Q school, you got to get through all that. And, you know, there's weeks out there that you just hang out by yourself. So, um, I mean, you can be with a friend or your girlfriend or of whatever. But, you know, COVID's tough, even tougher right now. So, um, yeah, it's pretty much how you cope. Cope. Not. I know you can play five under at your home course and yeah. around around the world, but you yeah, you got to learn how to play professionally, and you know, you get money and all that. So, and different golf courses, yeah, different exactly. tests, every week, as different well. hotel rooms yeah. every, all the time. Yeah. You know, the travel. It's yeah. things that people don't you know, appreciate yeah, sometimes. And yeah. you're a long way from home. Yeah, yeah. Like, Perth, Australia is a long way. I remember when I went, to, I went to Australia for a few weeks um, back in 2015, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And I felt so far away from yeah. home. Yeah. I was only there for three weeks yeah, and yeah. I was with my wife and we had a little baby yeah. at the time. But I almost really felt like homesick. And I suppose yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the same for you. Like, if you're based in Perth, that's where you live, that's where you grew up. As soon as you then start traveling to yeah, Europe yeah. or going to America, it must be quite challenging because it's like, it's not super close anymore, yeah, is it? Yeah. And obviously it's technology helps, but... Yeah, technology is pretty much your best friend, you know. This is your best friend, you it know, is. but I know it's sad, but it's, I mean, it's kind of the truth. But yeah, it's, well, we, as from Australia, I've learned to, you know, live kind of away from home for a long time, you know. When I leave my mom and dad, they don't cry. You know, they you know they say good luck and yeah. you know we talk on the phone and that. But it's not, yeah, it's not like end of the world kind of thing. You know, we're going to be back. We're of course, do that. and it's you know our job to play well and then come back. So it is a bit tough with COVID. You know, we got to quarantine in a hotel for two weeks, and I've done that twice now. And really, it's, on so your for own? a month, yeah, for a month, I was that was sitting tough. in a room half this size, and yeah, you get ho- you get hotel food and it's terrible and you know you got uber eats every day and you know it's we got to get it out of our own pocket it's three thousand dollars for that for the two weeks oh and my then goodness and then you got to pay for you know food that you're not going to eat the hotel food because no. it's horrendous and then and it's super expensive yeah, exactly so yeah it's uh it's a bit tough but um yeah you, i mean you learn to be away from home from a young age if you're a golfer i think and you know you can make it as as you know friendly you know there's a lot of people that want to pursue pro golf so you want to you can hang out with your friend and do Q school with them and do all that. And I think it's really important to have that because some people can't, you know, take being by themselves, you know, it's tough. So, um, there's a lot that more that goes into tour life yeah. than I think people can appreciate. Well, that's what we, we obviously like you've won on European tour. You're super successful, but like, like James, who we've had on before, who, who was a European tour player, but obviously missing cuts and stuff. And, you know, didn't do as well as we liked to. It's not as glamorous a life as you think. If you say to somebody, oh, I'm, I'm, oh you're here, that guy over there is a European tour pro, you're thinking that's the dream. But yeah. in reality, unless you are doing really well, it must be so, so tough. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, there's a lot to it behind the scenes. But like I said, um, I think it's I think it's anything, you know, if you want to be a, a lawyer, you got to go through eight years of study, you know, it's, yep. it's tough. And that can yeah. be lonely. That, it's exactly, hard exactly. So I know. That's yeah. commitment where you can't go out yeah. with your friends at the weekend yeah, and things exactly. like that. So you're right, anything that you're trying to pursue, anything yeah. that you're trying to be ambitious for, but it, it comes with obstacles and barriers. You know what I can't fathom though, like we came up yesterday, it's only like only a four and a half hour drive, whatever, so in the grand scheme things not very far, but imagine if you'd have like flown here for the Open from Australia, yeah. wherever it might be, and you have a practice round, it's swinging it quite good, you get on the golf course, you like 80 82 yeah. or something how th- that must be horrible. exactly yeah it's a, it's a lot of mental strength um you work so hard for this specific week and yeah. then you miss the cut and it's a terrible feeling you know i missed five cuts in a row from 
later last year to you know Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Saudi. I missed all five cuts in a row, and you you know it's it's kind of good that that happens because you need to have a kick in the teeth sometimes, and then you work hard. But um, yeah, I mean it's not uh, you kind of it's you got to get over it, but you got to learn you got to learn every yeah. th- every every step of the way. You got to learn what you did right and what you did wrong, and you got to improve and. Um, played pretty good last couple of weeks or last couple of tournaments and hopefully I'm on trending trending path but yeah it's it's very it's a I mean I don't want to say it's a bad life but it's it's very good it's, it's very good different no, listen, yeah, it's diff- I th- yeah I think it's it's, it's the real side I yeah, don't think exactly. people get to the yeah hear. exactly yeah. this is why I love doing the podcast and things and getting yeah. people like yourself mm-hmm. on because yes it looks glamorous yeah. and, and you'd never for one minute ever believe you could ever complain about being in St Andrews for a week. Yeah, yeah. Like, it is literally a dream. For, yeah, for most is. people around the world, it it's is. a dream. But, but it comes with... It's not always perfect. No, you know what I mean? because when you come here, you come with family for a once yeah. lifetime trip. We yeah. spend in, mo- but you're not on your own yeah. or going grafting or you've got a swing fault you're trying to work on. That's yeah. that's the reality, isn't yeah. it? That's the difference. Yeah. And you've got to play like say testing conditions, what you're not used to, and, mm. and all those things. Like that's where it becomes a much more of a of you've got to a mental strength. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's a lifestyle, isn't yeah. it? That's that you know, I'm sure, mm-hmm. and. Again, the glamorous side, the the private jet, yeah. the mansions, yeah. all the money in the world. That'll also, and again, it'd be hard for people to to appreciate. Would also come with different challenges. Yeah. Like you know, it's um, it, it's hard to stay motivated when you've got things like that much yeah. money and things like you know, look at your Rory's and your DJs yeah. and your things like that, and you think it's hard. Like they've got to go out every single week and put the grind in, yeah, even exactly. when they don't always have to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where's what's the what's the goals? Give me give me a list. Have you got um, have you got yearly goals, lifetime goals, career goals? Yeah, you know, lifetime. I probably want to be Hall of Fame. So obviously, a lot of lot of uh, wins as well under the belt. And you know, I think a lot of people would want to say that um, if they're very you know dedicated to the yeah. game. Um, but you know, I'd love to be top fifty. Well, we can start with let's say top hundred by the end of the year. You What's know, your current ranking right I'm now? I'm about two twenty. I got to one thirty after Vic Open, but you know, slowly got out because you know COVID and yep. the European Tour stopped for a little bit, but um, and a few missed cuts. But um, yeah, I would like to be you know top hundred, top fifty end of the year. Um, my divisor is pretty low as a start, like as a professional when you start, you know, start uh, the professional life, you get a divisor, and you know by the time goes you get your divisor what ranks does that up. Mean? so it's i think it's like the tournament wins and then it div- you get it divides from the tournaments you've played so i haven't played enough tournaments to you know get it like kicked out so okay, yeah. i've got you know small amounts so i got the minimum right now i think um and pretty much the points that i play good in they count and yep. the ones that I played okay and I still win, but um, yeah, the you pretty much, pretty much like if it's a Brooks Kepka, you know, in two years their win kind of kicks out because their, um, yeah, divisor is pretty high. So I'm not really sure on it that much, but I know it's it is a complex science. The yeah, world yeah, ranking, yeah. isn't it? So you need to play a lot of tournaments this year. To is that is that the simple answer? Is that? Oh uh, well, no. I'm saying if I play, let's say I go out on a win, uh, next week, yeah. I would jump up in the rankings heavily, heavily yeah. but yeah. if someone like Brooks Kepka won and um, they wouldn't yeah. get kicked up that much I let's say that. we were the same rankings of and course. he's played um, plenty of tournaments he wouldn't have he wouldn't get kicked up that much cuz yeah. he's played a lot of tournaments but because I've only been pro for two and a half years I've you know it counts as more yeah, yeah. so what is the schedule pretty busy this year uh yeah so i mean i'm going to be in europe for probably another two and a half months three months cuz I don't want to go home and quarantine. Of course. Yeah, do you have so to quarantine when you go home too? Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and when you come back here? No, no, no. So we get an exempt, like special exemption when we come out and play yeah. uh, these tournaments. So, but we, you know, last week, uh, that was the first week on. I had to get tested before I fly. I had to get tested as soon as I landed. Um, and then had to get tested on day five. And then had to get tested on day eight. And then I just got another test to go to Denmark in a couple of days. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty brutal with the COVID tests. But, um yeah, pretty much. New, new way of life, yeah, isn't it, it really? Is, yeah, it is. And when when you're um, when you're playing all these tournaments at the moment, are these all pretty much brand new tournaments to you? So like, have you uh, done Denmark before? No, I've never done Denmark because uh, I got cancelled, I think, last year, or I just didn't play. But um, So a lot of these new events coming up now? 
I've so I've played like Scottish Open and I've played um I didn't play Irish Open, I don't think it was on last year. Um played Porsche European Open in Germany. Yeah. So half of them are okay me and half of them are because you know, when COVID wasn't there, I would, you know, stay here for a month, go home and then come back. Course. But because I don't want to quarantine. Well, yeah, I don't want to quarantine. I want to play as much as I can when I can. So, you know, take the necessary time off when I need to, but, um, you know, play as many. Who gives you guidance when you go to a brand new tournament? Like, let's say, let's say Denmark. Yeah. You've never been there, yeah. right? You get off the flight mm. and you land. Mm. Explain how you get to it places. Ha- it happens. Okay. Like how do you how do you get to places? Where okay. do you stay? Who <laughs> recommends restaurants? Who recommends how you travel? Whoa. Who tells you where the driving range is? How does that all work? So obviously you don't really know, but we're in a bubble now. So as soon as we get to the normally we fly in. Uh, they might you know you get man, you know, I have a manager. He uh, takes care of me, but um, there's guys on the European tour side, yep. player relations side that help out, and you know you have to get this, you have to get that. So. Um, pretty much you fly in, you get your uh, courtesy car or your service to the hotel. Um, this is COVID, so, and then you've got to get your test pretty much as soon as you get there. Yeah. Wait in your hotel room for about four or five hours, and then you can do whatever you want. But you can't leave the hotel or the golf course. Okay. Wow. So pretty much you're in, you're kind of stuck in. Because the that. gym or the range and that's yeah, kind yeah, of Yeah, yeah, really. so pretty much just what you yeah. have to do for your work life. You can't really, you know, go out and... You can't go like to a restaurant down yeah, the like road Yeah, like if we, we were in Dubai at the beginning of the year and, you know, we're right on the right... And the marina. Yeah, literally there. And we couldn't, you know, we could just look outside. We can't go out and walk and, you know, get hotel, a Hotel, golf course, exactly, hotel, yeah, golf course, exactly. that's it. Yeah, so... So is that... In a weird way, does that almost help you when you are going to these venues that you don't know about? Because you've not got a choice. You yeah. Get, you, like you, you've, you've got, I'm guessing then, is there, th- there's player um, dining, yep, I yep, guess. Yep. So you, your food's all sorted yep. for you. Yep. There's, there's, as soon as you get to the golf course, is the hotel like right next to the golf course? Yeah, or usually. Sometimes travel? So next week it's a bit different. It's like half an, half an hour away. Kay. I don't think they can get hotels nearby, but, well, that is the nearest hotel, so. Um, there's a few hotels that the players stay, and then, um, but usually it's on the golf course. So yep. you know, because of COVID reasons and getting a cab back and forth or whatever you're of doing, course. it's just easier if the course was on the go- like Belfry. The course we stayed at the at Belfry, the Belfry. Yeah, that's so, that easy. Into so it was easy, you know, just. In a way, does that not make it more like an actual bubble where it's like you're literally staying there and the course is there and you don't see anything else? Yeah, I mean, I'm not the touristy type of guy so i'm not going out not every going, day yeah. and but you know there's you know you when you go out to dinner every night you see you see a lot of things and you know if it's a special place you go and check it out but usually it's usually you're there to do one thing and practice yeah. and do all that but also yeah it's tough because you're not really getting away from work you yeah. know you want to obviously like I don't say it's work, you know, it's, you know, it's my life and I love it has, playing. I think it has to be seen as a job and it work because yeah. you've got to structure it like yeah, that. Yeah, and if yeah. you didn't you need time it's away as well, don't yeah, you? Like, it's yeah, a yeah. business and you, and you do have to see it. And I think again, for people listening who don't live in golf, they would struggle to un- comprehend that. Yeah. But sometimes after you've played a tournament, let's say you've had a great round or a bad round, wherever it may be, sometimes you do want to switch off and, yeah, and go exactly. away and, and yeah. go for ice cream and yeah, go to watch exactly, the cinema yeah, and things yeah. like that, where obviously you can't at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So, Again, when you get there, is is, a, you, is your manager on site or is he on no, the phone? Or uh, my manager's in America, so he, you know, we contact through the phone and um, he knows most of the things. You know, he gets it done before I get there. You know, he gets everything sorted just so I don't, you know, have to wake him up in the morning of and course. Then, you know, freak him out. But <laughs> so if you have a problem, is he the first person you ring? Uh, yeah, he's he usually knows most things. You know, um, he's a pretty good pretty good what he, uh, what he does and you know it's his job so he yeah. you know he does he does he does a very good job of it he knows all the yeah, events it's, he knows who's yeah because who. if you <laughs> if you think about setting up all this setting up all that you know by yourself it gets pretty you know of gets course pretty you need to have active, less so. thoughts yeah, than exactly golf, exactly, exactly yeah, you need like, to not think about yeah, anything exactly, don't you? and so. th- their job yeah. is to make sure you think about nothing yeah. your job is to go up, practice hit yeah. balls play yeah. play as best you and can then after the after the round yeah do this and it's like okay yeah so it's yeah it's and then you caddy do you have a full-time caddy? No. So at the moment, I'm kind of toss and turning at the moment. Um, had some, you know, I had a caddy for a year and a half. He was awesome. Um, and then, you know, just bubble life. And it was a bit tough with, you know, he lived in America. So it was a bit, everything's, everything's right now is a bit tough. You know, I don't have a European tour caddy. So, um, or Europe, European caddy. So it's not, 
it's not easy to just you know travel in and out from america and all that so um yeah it's right now i'm kind of just i'm getting a local next week just because uh no one can i mean the person that i had before couldn't you know fill in so yeah uh it's yeah it's, right now it's a bit tough but so when you get a local caddy mm. are they just literally local to the golf club or are they are they actually professional no, caddies? so he's well i'm not sure i don't i don't know the guy that i'm seeing next week so you know there's a lot of trust and all that I was gonna say, is that bit, bit yeah uh, it, it is a little a little strange i've never really had a local caddy like someone that i've I mean, obviously professionally if some if you get a professional caddy in new for the new week or new like he's a new person like he knows the way to do everything you know he's yeah. caddied before yeah and he'll get the gist of you know what i like and what i don't i don't want him to tell me this i don't want him to tell me that you know or i can just tell him you know i usually just tell him what you like so yeah um but next week it's probably going to be you know mostly my you know i do the yardage book i do all that and he's just carrying the bag yeah pretty much pretty much i mean cleaning your clubs carrying yeah, the bag it's kind of a last minute thing so i mean it's yeah. It's just like I said. It's tough if you you know got a caddy from America and it's of course and there's you know troubles along the way and all that. So um, yeah, a bit of bit of tour life there. Uh, so you you just let, lay out the land and go right. I like it. This is my favorite club to hit off the yeah. tee. This is my shot shape mm. or not even no, nothing. Uh, it's oh well to him to him. Oh I don't know. I probably have to do most things myself. You know I would rather yeah. I've played enough to know what I like and yeah. I, obviously you want a second thought but. I mean, he's he's not a professional caddy, no. so he wouldn't know more than what I would of course. probably know. So um, you're going to know you're getting better, obviously, yeah. aren't you? No, we'll see. We'll see next week if it goes good or not. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully his English is good and things like that. You've got yeah. To I mean, we've texted back and forth. So oh, great. I mean, I think it's okay. Um, but like I said, it's pretty much just carrying. The but bag. then after Denmark, where are you off to next? Uh, Germany. Mm. Straight and it'll be someone new again. Yeah, the he he caddied for me at Belfry, so he's um. He actually caddied on the PJ tour for a little bit, and he yeah he knows the rope a little bit. Oh more great! So you getting the guy that you've already had on before? Yeah, in the yeah. Past. He just had he just had stuff to do, so um, it was just kind of like a last minute thing, and it is what it is. So wow. um, yeah, I mean it's a bit tough, but it's fine. You know, I've, I know how to play golf, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I play okay. I'm going to switch off golf for a second. Yeah. What do you like to do when you're not <laughs> playing golf? Oh, some of my followers know, but I like to play Call of Duty on my laptop, gaming laptop. So okay. I, um, on my my off time instead of sightseeing, I'd probably you know <coughs> play COD. Um, I used to love Modern Warfare too. Yeah, back when I was about so I'm thirty now, and I was probably twenty mid twenty nineteen twenty. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. Yeah. I got obsessed to the point where yeah. when I was walking around place, I think this would be a good map. Yeah, like I'd be yeah. looking at this thing it's and I'd nearly, be in there sniping. Yeah, it's nearly you play so much and you're just like <laughs> and you see like a like a glint like this yeah. and you're just like oh sniper like, yeah. uh, no, it's, um, <laughs> this is all like going over my yeah. head I think I'm, I'm dead old here right yeah. now you're an old man Rick I used to play Mario Karts <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you like playing cards and then do you, do you like meet up with like friends online and is that again a way of staying connected um, to your friends oh, I don't know it's a little tough with COVID but yeah, as in, like, as in, when you play COD, can you do it? You can do it online. Oh yeah, you can play with anyone in the That's world. What I mean. like so can you can you connect with like your pals back in person? Yeah, like usually it's usually usually like that. But last like last night, I played with a guy that just you know DM me on really? Instagram, and I was like, That's okay, cool. let's just go play. And you know, it's pr I mean, the gaming community is actually pretty cool. You know, there's not if you're playing with them, you're you know they're a team. You're on a team, so they're like it gets a little toxic when you're versing other people. Mm. But it's I mean it's it's I mean that's it's a nice escape. Yeah, it's, it's is it a pretty awesome laptop you've got? Does it have to be pretty powerful? Yeah, to play it's got to be pretty. It's got to be. It was. I mean, like a couple of thousand dollars because you know it's. It's not like a PS4. I carried a PS4 when I first came out on tour. Did you? And it was. It was way too hard because it was. It was. You have to connect it to the PS4 hotel box. room yeah, every time, exactly. and then the TV can be like inches, and then there can be like tiny, and you're just like. This is sometimes terrible. you can't get to the back of it, let's yeah, say, yeah, or yeah, things yeah. like that. Exactly, and then yeah, sometimes like it's like up in a shelf, and you have to literally <laughs> yank it out, and then like you hopefully you don't break anything. But so you've got resorted to the laptop. Yeah, uh, it's a new thing now. I mean, the I, many got other few, I got a few. I quite the mobile it. version, you know. I know it's probably not if you're yeah, a, if, if you're not, if you're really into it, it's not. But I because yeah. I've not played COD for years, yeah. and about two years ago, this mobile one came out. You get into it? I really got into. It's like, actually pretty fun. Yeah. As if you're a proper gamer, it's yeah. obviously like a bit basic. But like if you've not played COD for ages or you're new to it, it was actually for a, for an iPhone game, and it was free. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was yeah, decent. yeah, I did play for it for like a couple of weeks, but it's not as good as obviously. I used to always camp. Is that still a term? Oh yes. Yeah, I was a proper cat. I just hide in the corner. We don't like you. I know. <laughs> I just hide in a corner. Is it a wimp? Camping, yeah, exactly. Camping's like, literally, like, you can put a tent and you just, you just sit in a corner. You sit in a corner and wait for someone. And then some really good across. person that's been killing people will come past and just go bang. Yeah, and just then, keep, oh, but then they come back and, and find you and just shoot you. <laughs> that's a camper. That's a camper. 
<laughs> and do you play? Do you play like? Do you have opportunities to challenge other like tour players? Are they into it as well? Yeah, no. Oh, we usually play together if we do play because it's like a squad or duo or a trio as you can play, and then you verse hundred other fifty people. In but like, is there other players out on tour that are in their hotel room playing yeah, cod against sure. it? Yeah, really? I mean, who, who else is dead into it? Um, I don't know now, but you know, Crocker, Sean Crocker, Sam Horsfield, Kurt Kitayama, um, Brandon Stone. No way. I'm exposing people. I don't know. If it's good, <laughs> but, uh, nah. um, I think Callan Shinquin, Jordan Smith. You know, I'm not. Yeah, there's a couple guys that I'm not friends friends with, but you know, there's. You got friends on COD or something, maybe. Yeah, can, can yeah. it work like like you, you could have friends on the PS? Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Understand. Like I don't know someone, but you can just add them because they're good at the game and you know you enjoy it. But no yeah, way. Yeah, you try to enjoy it as much as you can. That's how I first got into YouTube, really watching COD videos. Yeah. I always remember this one where this guy like threw a knife and it went. Like, yeah, just over that map one. And then, that yeah, was that's so pretty sick. Cool. Yeah, we do that. Yeah, it's it's fun. I mean, yeah, it's just a way to get a, get away from it. And you so know, it's sometimes it's bad because you're like literally on it and then you can't sleep because your like brains like screen and yeah because you sleep, almost I th- anytime if you like but certainly back in the day when i used to play more video games and stuff you you think about it don't you even when yeah, like you go into sleep like, and stuff yeah. like why is uh min when we late for his tea time i've got a good kill streak going yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just wait just wait a little bit put it back a little bit <laughs> so who's your pals out on tour who'd you hang around with um a lot of the aussies a lot of the aussies um so ryan fox no, he's New Zealander. Oh, of course he is, yeah. So, sorry, yeah. Um, you know, Jake First McLeod, one, say Scott, uh, literally all the Australians, you know, we're all pretty, you know, we've, we're have we away from home and, you yeah. know, we relate to each other. But a lot of the guys out there are really cool, you know. I can, I can it's, with the bubble, it's pretty tough because it's, you know, we've got to be in, in a pod. So pretty much me and you have to have dinner every night. Oh, really? And is that yeah. how it is? It's like, yeah, and your ca- and the caddy, uh, but... Wow. How do you designate them to somebody else? Are yeah, you, kind are you of. You're told kind of, you've got to be with. No, me, oh, it's it's not that strict, but you <laughs> school trip. <laughs> but if you, yeah, but if you yeah, get a buddy, get a yeah, partner. It's pretty much is. It's a buddy system, so you kind of have to be with someone. But you know, it's it every every table is social distance. So right. I mean, you can be. I can be with you every night, but. So we're a, we're on this it can be a different table here. Yeah. Just there's actually five of us around it. It'd almost be like this. Like yeah, you've yeah. Got but it's just tables. like little two tables just like this set up or along the hole. Yeah. And last week was at the Belfry was really good because there was three t- restaurants, but usually, usually, you know, it's only one restaurant and, you know, sometimes it's it gets a bit hectic because uh, there's not enough space. You know, there's 150, there's 140 players plus caddies sometimes. So they do get venues that are really good and really big. So... Um, and do, do you like sorry do you like eating out on like is the food good when you go to like tour events uh, how do you eat well it's good and bad so well, well obviously you want to eat healthy um and hopefully there's you know decent decent things on the menu um but then there's some days where you just shoot f- three four over and you're like oh yeah i know those days i need a burger that's, that's, had yesterday. that's, that's a good day isn't <laughs> it? that's where i'm shooting that's where i'm opening champagne i'm going back to my <laughs> wife and going let's get the steaks out let's get champagne baby. 75 i've shot 75 oh. we're going out big tonight where you you do it the other way you you uh yeah, you well comfort yeah, after shooting yeah, 75 it's little, yeah it's a little different for us, <laughs> but, um, yeah it's yeah it's it's tough because it's like you know you kind of want to feed yourself really good and it's it's kind of like an investment you know you fly business because you need a take care of your body or else you're going to destroy your body just yeah. sitting up like this for 13 hours. Oh, that's generous. Maybe like 20 hours fly yeah. from Australia. So uh, it is expensive, but um, yeah, it's, you do, you do take care of yourself. You need to take care of yourself. So, so all those marginal gains, isn't it? That we talk about like 1% here. Like you yeah. said, if, if getting a business flight over economy saves yeah. you a little bit of energy, but yeah. then that makes a difference yeah. over a season or over a career, yeah. that's going to make a lot of difference yeah. to you. And yeah, success. and it's what a few K different. I mean, that could be, not even a shot at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, you look at things like that. You mentioned before about the your Aussie pals you yeah. kind of friendly with. Have you had any, like, words of wisdom from, like, the Australian greats, like Greg Norman, Adam Scott? Have, have they ever, have you ever been in contact with them? Have they ever give you any advice, like, mentored or anything? Yeah, um, oh, I mean, not mentor, but, you know, just, you know, it's pretty cool. So, at WGC, you know, that was my first tournament, first no, second PGA Tour tournament, um, and it was just amazing. You know, you're there with the top. I was the second worst, worst second ranked there, and there was literally sixty other people, sixty other people that were ranked in the top sixty, and you're just hanging out with them. And I was having breakfast and lunch with Adam Scott for like three days in a row, and I'm just like, I can get used to it. It's wow. pretty cool. And is it cool? It's cool. It is. He cool. seems it really. Is. He seems really he's, cool. He's yeah. I mean, Jason Day. All, they're they're all pretty late. I mean, they're. 
obviously if their golf's bad, you know, they might not be in a good mood. But yeah. I mean, they're enjoying their life and they're going out there playing, trying I, to play. I've the done best. one interview with Jason Day, and he was re- I really he's, liked he's, him. He's he's awesome. Yeah, he's he's I don't know. He's kind of like a brother. You know, he's he's kind of like my age. I know yeah. he's older than me, but he's. He's got he relate- a lot of similar like, mannerisms. He's, he's like, a kid. He's a kid. <laughs> is, is he like? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I loved him on those Taylor Made videos. Yeah. Because yeah. those, I don't know if you saw those long, those those long form videos that like Taylor Made put on YouTube, and there was just him like just picking Tiger's brain yeah. for like ten minutes, and the yeah. questions he was asking and stuff, I really enjoyed. They could tell yeah. he wanted to be there. He was yeah. loving it. Yeah. He's yeah, cool. It was like a wedge. That was a wedge video. Was yeah. Like, and he's like, uh, "Can you speak in like kid terms?" Because yeah. it's like, I don't know what you're speaking about, I, Tiger. <laughs> I could watch those videos of Tiger for hours. Yeah. It's just uncut those for like an hour and a half. So the way he talks is just. I mean, is Tiger your idol or? Because yeah, ti- yeah. yeah, Tiger is. Yeah, I would say he's you know my idol. Yeah, in golf, yeah, I look up to him, and you know he's done pretty. Uh, hopefully, he recovers well, but he's he's pretty he's pretty cool. That's I met awesome. him. I met him a few years, three four years ago at a junior tournament, and him as well. He was pretty. He was. Not a kid, but he was still a, still a teenager. You know, mm. he his mind's still young, but obviously, you know, there's a lot of wise and wisdom and everything he's gone through. But um, yeah, he was he was on our level. He was playing basketball. Jason Day at that same tournament the year after, uh, he was playing table tennis with us, ping pong. You know, he was. It's cool. Like they, I think they like it when they're you know helping us juniors and helping us you know pave pave the way a little bit. So it's pretty cool. That's when you were a junior. Are you describing yourself now as almost a junior? Type? I, I still, I still don't. I'm a professional golfer, but I don't. I mean, I'm still a kid. Like I, <laughs> people that know me, they they know me as like annoying little kids. So <laughs> I'm, I'm still. I, I like to be called you know professional, but you know I'm. You I'm trying to enjoy. That. I'm trying to enjoy life as much as I can. Like there's you know tour life is you know sometimes brutal, but you know I like to play card. I like to you know. Hang out. I just yeah, yeah. yeah. I just like to you know have a twenty two at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I was going exactly. out getting smashed every single exactly. weekend. You were a rough yeah. one at twenty two. Oh yeah, after, yeah. after Rick, all my fighting. We work at the mirror in the golf shop. <laughs> so your life <laughs> was like going 22. out on a weekend, driving to the golf club in the morning, probably still a bit worse. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, be careful. Yeah, <laughs> be careful, yeah. yeah. there's uh, some trips I shouldn't have taken. But yeah. into, you got taxis in, didn't you? you of got course, taxis I did. Of course, shop, sat I did. Rough, rough as anything. Thinking, oh, hi, Mister Mister Jones. How you doing? You could make on tour at twenty two with your Jalen the Burger. Sweatbands, sweat bands, twenty-two. Bands, yeah, I think I was. I think the best thing for me was realised I wasn't good enough. Mm. And I, I was never. I never dedicated yeah. enough when I was a kid. I was never in proper, proper into it. And as soon as I came out of my local little golf course, and I wasn't the best golfer anymore. And I thought, thought, oh crap, I'm nowhere near. It was good. Yeah, like it's yeah. That's also a very, a very you know tough to you know. That's pretty impressive to n- like know when you're kind of like not good enough. What was I think I was enough tipped yeah, on one yeah, side exactly. I think it, when you're close to the middle exactly, yeah. like you think you can I could, I yeah, could, you can, could. Yeah. I, that's the most dangerous yeah, point yeah, for me yeah. because you can pursue it and you yeah. can pursue it and nobody's going to tell exactly, you you're not good yeah, enough and if yeah. you've got the money you've got the backing yeah. I've, I've still known friends who are probably similar to me still trying to make yeah, it exactly. and I think there is a time where you've got to go I yeah, just don't think yeah. it's going to work really it's and that's ri- that's a hard thing to say it's, just, it, it's known in yourself but I think it's because with golf Everybody knows when you play well, depending on your ability, but you can play good golf yeah, to a good standard. Yeah. And like you can hit shots that, like, you, Rick hit some shots yesterday yeah, exactly. you would have like been proud of. Yeah, exactly. You, like, there's a hit on 17 here. He yeah. went over the old course hotel, yeah. literally probably at 350. He was went behind, but. 72 you, yards away from the pin. Yeah. And he's gone for this. And I didn't hit the <laughs> green in th- three shots. Yeah. But one with that tee shot, though, <laughs> I like, stuffed it. Genu- genuinely, if the Open was here, which is next year, yeah. any tour pro would have took that tour yeah, shot, that exactly, tee shot of exactly, yours. Yeah. But then it's everything else, isn't it? It's, that's yeah. what's so hard with the golf to let it go yeah, and, ex- yeah. and it admit, is, yeah. I can't do it. What do you think is the best part of your game? Uh, You're long off the tee, aren't you? Usually, when I play good, I'm not making any like mistakes, so doubles are kind of off the card. Um... I make plenty of birdies. So last last week, le- the perfect example, you know, uh, I started off three over. So, you know, I was coming 110th or whatever and then shot five under one of the lowest rounds. So when I play good, I know it's good enough, but it's, you know, kind of getting to a level where it's very good golf and hopefully I can get to that. But um, I'm good at, I don't know, I'm just, it's it's a bit of momentum, a bit of everything. When everything's working, everything's good. Yeah, but then it's kind of like learning to. It was a bit nervous, you know, the first round. You know, I, I a few swing changes had to 
trust it a little bit more and then you know you have nothing to lose after you th- when you're three over so you know you went out there and shot five under and you're like holy should have just done that do you still get nervous or do you get yeah. nervous yeah for sure how do you deal with it because i i've a lot i of, yeah. feel at the moment weirdly mm. i should be experienced i feel more now that i'm managing my ner- nerves the worst i've ever managed them right it's, now uh, that's the hard thing because i don't know how much you practice but pros they practice every day yeah because it's their job and they what are you playing in what are you playing in there's so many people asking what you're playing in oh belfry you know british masters and you go out there and i know you're just you've worked hard but you've that you've worked the whole month leading up to it for that you know for that tournament and you know it's a it's pressure you know it's it's not just easy you know you hit 10 shots on the range that are like amazing why don't you just do that on the course but you know everyone has trouble going from the range to the course tour pros these days me everyone but it's just it's i think when you get out on course on you know tour you know on european tour and like any tournament you kind of find a way to you end up finding a way to play yeah. it's completely different to when you're on playing you know with your group of friends yeah. or that so when you get out on the course you just i don't know like the first hole i missed the four footer and i'm like what did i do wrong there and like i practiced for a month doing three or four footers and then i missed the first one and i'm like well i was a little slow on that routine let's just fasten it up so for the whole week i fastened up putted pretty good right and but i was nervous on the first one you know and you know you get a little frozen over it and you're like okay that's that's not good so then you kind of rationalize and you kind of know how to of course yeah cope with it but it's a lot of people ask that even when i did a q a a couple of weeks ago people were like how do you do with this how do you do yeah. with that and i think it's such a mental sport. It's oh, it's, it's crazy. crazy. Like anyone can hit it. You can hit it good. You can hit it three hundred fifty yards. But then it's just w- like the last hole of, of the tournament. You need to be able to do it. It's 100%. just hundred percent. I don't know. It's 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 hard work, obviously, but it's experience. It's hundred percent experience. What was it like? Obviously, now. Well, was your first win two thousand and nineteen? Twenty. Twenty. Turned pro two thousand nineteen, and then so you won early. the Vic Open in twenty. Yeah. Was there a crowd? Yeah, huge. So what was that like as well playing? Because that was that one of the last crowds you played. Yeah, in front it was. Of? It was. Yeah. So it was that, and then we played. I think it was Qatar, Kenya, and then COVID hit. Yeah. So it was literally like not even a month until COVID. And do you love playing in front of crowds? It's yeah. I ha- like half of the tournaments. I feel like I haven't didn't get into it because there's no crowds. Is yeah. usually when I, I don't know I'm pretty lucky. You know, I got a bit of a like a little bit of a fan base. So when I go over to any country there's always like a little group of guys or nice. girls that come out and watch and is and this through instagram would you say yeah it's yeah 100 percent instagram and they they kind of you know root for you so you you want to play well for yourself but well for them and i love playing in front of crowd, especially in australia where it was kind of like a home i would say a home crowd. it's not my ha- home it's you know the other side of australia but they're so good you know the fans in australia they know how to it's kind of like the european fans they know what golf is you yeah. know sometimes if you're in a tough spot and you hit it to 20 feet you know clap you know but um it's yeah they just root for you and yeah i love, I, nice love fans. I, yeah. I love do you fans. feel like you almost show off in front of yes fans? yes that's so I'd, that's love, I'd love to be in that situation well, you could you had the ability to, you had fans watching yesterday yeah, you just have the, the ability to show yeah, off. i go yeah, the complete opposite yeah. way you, you have to take it a good way yeah. you have to take it a good way you can't just oh you have to think that they're helping you and they want you to do good of instead of what you probably thought. Oh, I feel like the film in me ready. Yeah, exactly. Oh, to see me hit a, a yeah, exactly. Or oh, I might hit it right yeah, on, the, exactly, on the 18th yeah. though at Old Course. And then when you go, oh, sorry, Rick on 18th at Old Course and he duck hooked it left. Yeah. Like, that's what I always end up thinking yeah, about. Exactly. So, so it's my mindset. Yeah. So obviously at the time when you won that event, yeah. you would have been so happy clearly. And I'm guessing it was just before obviously Old Code was, was hitting hence because there was fans there. But after that then, now that obviously there's been events with no fans, do you look back and are you even more kind of thankful for your win because what i'm trying to get to is if you 100%. won an event now without fans it's still yeah. a massive achievement but you've not handled that no, extra yeah, pressure exactly, but yeah. you it's, know it's, you can do that yeah, now it's a bit different um because fans you know there's going to be let's say Ryder cup Ryder cup you're playing in america and let's say COVID hit no fans like that's you it's you consider it a win if europe wins but it's it's, it's not, not a proper. proper. Right, it's not proper really because like you're almost, you're playing against hundred thousand fans that are booing for you. You know, booing at you. You know, so it's. I mean, hopefully they're not like that, but you know, there's some crowds that are like that, and especially Ryder Cup. So I think it's a bit of both. You know, you've. It's let's say if I've won next week, it's. I'm proud of myself for winning without a fan because without fans because it's I know it's tough for me to get going mm-hmm. without it, and you have to. 
sometimes you just got to fist pump a par part for, you know. Just to get... Yeah, oh. just to get going. Yeah. And that that's what troubled me early on COVID because when we got out to play because, you know, you, you're out there, but then you just got... No you hit like a class bunker shot to a foot and like... Yeah. There's nothing. Then, yeah, I know. Your playing partner's like good shot, but like yeah. you kind of want to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You and all that. So. Have you got ambitions to play in like the President's Cup? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that would be... That would be cool. You know, they were, I think the last one was in Australia yeah. at Royal Moment, and that was... Well, Tiger was the captain yeah, one if exactly. it was USA. That was pretty... That was pretty... S- that would have been sick, you know, just being there. I'm sure Cameron Smith and the Aussies, you know, Mark Leishman, Adam Scott, you know, them there. There is actually good the players. I must admit, the more... Cameron Smith's been I, killing it, hasn't yeah, he? What I was saying before about... And then probably should have... Leishman as well. He's so the amount, there's so much uh, Australian talent, isn't it? Like, the golf is amazing out there anyway. Yeah. But like you say... First off, when I was talking about Adam Scott and like Greg Norman, but then let's say Jason, Jason Day, Day, Mark Leach from yeah, Cameron Smith yeah. is absolutely killing it at the moment. You have yeah. got some really good, you know, pedigree of players. Yeah. You know, it's un- it's phenomenal, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've got two things. Mm-hmm. First off, can you remember the first ever DM you sent me? <laughs> no. What did <laughs> sounds, I say? Sounds a bit weird. <laughs> I've got some thoughts about DMs in a minute. This was really funny. I'm trying to think. What did, what did I say? This was 2019, February 2019. And you are pitch not embarrassing though. Well, it is a little bit uh, embarrassing. A little bit. Embarrassing. Did I say something? Did I? Did you follow me? And then, or did I follow you? And then you followed me? And then I would have said something about that. No. You, f- you featured in one of my YouTube videos. Oh. <laughs> this is where you're gonna <laughs> say your manager sent it you now or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't. That don't even. You featured oh, okay. you do like a. You featured in one of my videos, mm. and I was in Saudi, and I was filming Bryson DeChambeau. <laughs> you don't remember this? 16th of February. And you took a screenshot of the video. Oh, and I was, th- yeah, I was, yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> I remember, I remember, I remember. <laughs> to the people yeah. listening, up no, the everyone, on. no, people, people watch Tagging you, and yeah. they, and yeah, and my friends are like, ha look at this, and I'm like, oh no. Then we lose in the background, uh, you're looking very, very young, and Bryson DeChambeau, look at him there, oh, a skinny little kid. Even, yeah, we both don't look alike. <laughs> and uh, Minwoo is uh, picking his nose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm picking my nose. And he said, like, you had to do me like that, eh? Hey? Yeah. Have you, um. You in a relationship? You got yeah. I got a girlfriend back home. Yeah, is that hard as well? Um, it is obviously. It's Does she tough. come out much and see you? Or well, it's in Australia. Can't. You can't really leave unless you have like a job reason. But um, yeah, she you know she supports me a lot, and she's she lives on the other side of Australia at the moment. So uh, she was from where I was, Perth, and then you know family moved over. So um, but she, so she, she is that like Brisbane way then? Yeah, Gold Coast way. Yeah. So she lives like in a really nice place and you know there's uh when i go over there i would you know stay with them and uh i would you know practice at a nearby course and there's a lot of golfers that so much nice out, course yeah out there. yeah it's just it's nice it's um it, it is tough relationship wise it's tough but it's you know we we you know we're grateful of when we get to see each other you know, hang out with each other so it's uh you and know. like things like the time difference right yeah. now is hard as well yeah, like you're gonna speak to her yeah exactly like just facetime yeah super early in the morning yeah. or super late at night yeah. like must be challenging as well. well it's okay you know we're kind of used to it so we kind of you know make the most of what what we get so it is tough but you know it's yeah she's a yeah she's a good girl and she you know takes care of me when i need <laughs> when i need it and Cool. Does she pick you up? Is she is she like is she kind of well, when you've had a bad round and is she good encouragement or does she take your mind? Does she yeah, get to think about something yeah, else? Yeah, it, it is good. So at first she didn't know anything about golf, so she's like, "Oh, you did this," and I'm like, "Yeah, I well, know." Why don't why I don't for shooting seventy five? <laughs> yeah. What a great bogey! <laughs> <laughs> what does eight on that <laughs> <laughs> on the scorecard mean? What's that? What's that blue? Eight? What's that blue square? That, oh, <laughs> why why didn't you have any red squares? Why yeah. are there so many blue? Oh. <laughs> um, it's. It, I mean, it's good and bad. She knows a little bit about golf, but I think it's good that uh, it's a, it's good and bad. She she's learnt to take care of me that way, you know. Yeah. Not, yeah, but we try to you know talk. Because I suppose if you were with someone that was dead into golf, yeah. that's sometimes harder. Like, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it's they my, don't. Yeah, my I, wife isn't into it, and so I, I can sometimes say to her, "Good or bad, I've played really well today." She's like, "Oh, great. Um, what we're having for tea?" And she like almost brush over it, yeah. and it's like. Where it's, I think sometimes if it was a golf and yeah, listen, yeah. W- w- she might come in, she might get into golf yeah. and you might this might be in the future. Yeah. But sometimes it's a bit hard where it's like it's too much golf. It's just too much too golf. Much. You just want to get away from Correct. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So question then, a um, yeah. bit of a random one, but trying yeah. to use our world as an analogy. Like when we try and like have a, a milestone in subscribers or in views or whatever, like we 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 on like these journeys to hit a number, like a million subscribers yeah, yeah, last yeah. year, and you hit it, and for like a day or two, it's euphoric, so happy, and then. 
quite quickly you think, well, what's next? How did that feel when you won your first European tour event? I'm guessing, and rightly so, you were so, yeah. so happy. It's but then you just want more straight away. Yeah, or how does that yeah. feel? I think it well, it just comes down to goals, right? You Let's say one tournament you want to win in that year. But you win in that year, and then you know that you can win any other tournament. If you play good in this tournament, you can win in any other t- tournament. So I think it's a bit of a pat on the back, satisfaction, tick, tick that off. But then you just kind of... Just on to the next Yeah, on to the next. I mean, it's... I know Vic Open was a European Tour event, but, you know, you're striving for PGA Tours or WGCs or majors. So that's just a great step forward to that final, you know, or not the final goal, but, like, yeah. to the, to the you know, majors and milestones as well. So I think it's... I mean, as athletes, you want to do better every day. So, I mean, so what if... You, I mean, yes, good, you win one, let's win more. I think that's the mindset you have to have at your level because yeah. some guys would obviously be like, might win a local championship and they're like, oh, great. Over the moon, but yeah. because they've not got that drive for more, that's what stops you getting yeah. to that next level. Yeah, I, I think guess. everyone's different, you know. If yeah. someone wins, you know, Richard Bland, let's say last week, he's won. That's crazy, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, um, it's amazing. Like 750 exactly, stars. Yeah, so I would <laughs> took his first win. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, I mean, that would have been pretty brutal. I don't know how many times he's lost in a playoff or come <laughs> second, but yeah. to win, you know, at that course as well and. It's yeah, it's pretty special. So it's you've it's different for everyone. You know, obviously some people get their first win before other people, but and sometimes you know you could be better than someone. But everyone's got different goals and different all that. So I mean, yeah, I mean you guys want to hit two million subscribers yeah, and you just exactly. want to keep getting better. You know, and I don't like I don't watch every episode of what you guys do, but I mean I'm Go. sure you guys want to mm. help out. <laughs> Kick me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got I got told you're the biggest fan in yeah. the world. <laughs> could have got, could got someone else. I on. thought you brought that cap for me to sign. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. be asking for your signature, definitely. <laughs> um yeah, you do, you've got to keep driving, haven't you? You've got yeah. to keep pushing forward. Yeah. Um right, we're gonna wrap it soon because we're going yeah. playing golf. Yeah. Uh we're going to play golf at King's Barnes State, which I'm excited about. Mm. Have you played there before? Yeah, I played in Dunhill once and it's it's pretty spectacular it's pretty cool i'm not playing it so i'm looking forward to that yeah and then we are playing reverse round here tomorrow yeah yeah i'm excited for that because i know a lot of people haven't D- did you know this it's the one course tiger, tiger wants to yeah, play. yeah yeah someone said that to me and it's pretty cool that's, that's pretty cool it's crazy yeah that. so um, we're gonna play that tomorrow yeah. um i'm gonna lean on you for a lot of support and advice and uh and then i'm playing here again monday yeah trying to hopefully get normal way normal way yeah so i would have played it normal way yesterday mm. yeah we did play a set we did not mention that why have you not mentioned that we played yesterday? I, s- I did a lovely surprise did, for him. Did you, did you beat him? Oh, oh. yeah, yes. <laughs> Destroyed him. The one time he bloody beats me. Is it the bloody At old, the old course, course, too. The bloody old course. Oh. The one time I freaking surprised him. And do, I did something nice. Yeah, surprised me with my family. I didn't know they were going to be here. Oh, really? On that's the first cool. team, okay, my dad, cool. my brother. And then when we finished, my fiance and my mum was here. So oh, it was amazing. amazing. But the best part of it. You guys live near here? No, no like four or five hours. Oh, oh, so, so they've, so drove they've drove come up, oh, especially. Cool. Yeah, cool. Recognised I mean, it all. No, that's around the corner. Yeah. Five oh, yeah. hours, like. <laughs> but the, 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 the best part of the whole thing wasn't seeing my fiance and my mum on the 18th green. It wasn't seeing my dad and my brother. It was seeing your face <laughs> on the 17th tee when you were done out of it. Good yeah, game. exactly that. <laughs> Way of golf just kicking you in the yeah, teeth, well. isn't it? Eh? You do yeah, something yeah. nice. <laughs> I thought, you know what? I've done so many nice golf things gods. today. Golf gods have to Th- this has got 67 written all over it. Nope. It didn't. But right. got, yeah. yeah. It was lovely anyway. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Nice. Thank um, you. If uh, people want to follow you, they're going to check you out on Instagram. It's the best place to get you in it. Yep. Uh, we're going to go play some golf. Yep. I think it's going to be class. Uh, I'm excited about it. And uh, thanks for being on the podcast. Yes, thank you. Try to stay warm, but yeah, awesome to be on the podcast and hopefully see you guys soon. Awesome. We'll see you in literally five yeah, minutes. I mean, I meant the, <laughs> <laughs> I mean the nice. short fans. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All the big really <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be a YouTuber, I was like...